couch, dogs need italicent. Hey there Lick and Riffers, how are you doing? Welcome to another awesome lesson right here on Lick and Riff. And in this video, we're gonna discuss how we can add the six, two, five, one chord progression into our blues and create the six, two, five, one turnaround. Now, six, two, five, one basically means the sixth chord of the scale, the second chord of the scale, the fifth chord of the scale, and the root chord of the scale, okay? And it doesn't matter whether you know the scales or not because I'm gonna give you the answers. I'm gonna give you the six, two, five, one progression in several keys, in the key of C, the key of E, the key of G, the key of D, maybe the key of A as well. So you can take it and play it in several keys and experiment with it on your own. Um, now, we're gonna play all of those chords as seventh chords. Sometimes you'd wanna play the second chord as a minor seven chord, so we'll discuss that too, but um, don't let the theory intimidate you. This is based on the circle of fifths, which simply means that each chord, when it's played as a seventh chord, wants to resolve itself to the next chord. It wants to resolve itself into the sound of the next chord. And when the next chord is a seventh chord itself, it wants to resolve itself into the next one. And that kind of becomes a really nice cycle. And when you add it to the blues and you play it as a turnaround, as well as a chord sequence, it sounds awesome. It becomes a blues turnaround with chords instead of just the chromatic move. So um, enough talking. I hope I didn't intimidate you by talking too much. This is a really simple maneuver and uh, I'm gonna show you, uh, let's start with the key of C. So we have C7, right? And we're playing C7, then we're playing F7, then C7 again, then G7, then C7. Now, when you want to add the turnaround, then instead of going to the last G, you play A7, D7, and then G7, and then C7. Okay, now the second chord of the scale would be the D, so you can play it as a D minor seven. Okay, and then you have this. Right? And you've probably heard this, you know, millions of times before, especially if you're listening to the blues. Um, and it's not only in the blues, you have the 6251 everywhere in any song, uh, any country song, any love song, any folk song. You know, most of the time you have 251s, sometimes you have 6251, sometimes it extends into 36251. So your, your ear, at least, is familiar with that move. So again, in the key of C, it's A7, D7, or D minor 7 then G or G7, then you're back to C or C7, okay? The root chord can be the major chord. And what I did here, okay, was just a chromatic bass move from C, okay, to A. Okay, three, two, one, zero on the fifth string, and then I played the A7, just, you know, as an embellishment. turn it into a turnaround, you just play these four chords in sequence. Okay? Now, in the open position, it's a weak turnaround. But as you're gonna see in different keys, it'll create a really nice turnaround with the chromatics inside. So, um, once again, in the key of C with D7 this time, instead of D minor 7. As a turnaround, okay, you do have the chromatics here with, yeah, you have two, one, zero, two on A7, one with D7 or D minor 7, and zero with the G. Um, so you can emphasize that if you like, okay, and then you have the C, or the C7, and then you have the complete turnaround. Only seventh here is a weak sound. It's not a, it's not a, um, 
one of the prominent chord sounds. So, as I said, it's a weak turnaround, but that's in the key of C. Now, in the key of, um, in the key of G. And we have G7. Let's let our, let's let our ear get used to it, so. Right? That's the natural turnaround in the blues. So um, let's do, okay, if you want to find it yourself, you can do the same move I did on the bass notes. Okay, and you will reach E. So it's E7. Okay, and I play it with three on the second string. So E7 is our sixth. And then you have A7 as our second. Then you have D7 as our fifth. And then returns to G. So if you look at the second string, you have three, two, This is a strong turnaround. Right? So again, E7. Let's start with G. Right? And you can do A minor 7. Okay? That's the natural. Second chord, so let's try it with A minor seven. Right, and this kind of sacrifices the turnaround because then you have okay, which is another weak turnaround. But if you want the full sound, okay, you're gonna want to do A7. Right? You see how this works? It's a really neat chord progression to add to your blues right at the end there. Instead of simply playing the fifth, okay, the D7 that leads to G, you can play the 6-2-5-1 move. Now, uh, in the key of E, it's a little bit tricky because you have C sharp 7. Yeah, you can do it as a C7 up one fret. Okay? Just don't play the E strand. Okay, you can. Okay, because the E is on the scale. But then you get an interesting sort of embellishment there. Right? Um, and after the C sharp 7, you have F sharp 7. Then you have B7 and seven again so right so um, if your ears are still in the key of G I'll play it. get used to it. I didn't want to play the full, you know, the full 12 bar blues. So um, now that your ear is used to E, okay, you can do the chromatic uh, approach, but in reverse. Okay, two, three, four on the fifth string. Okay, or okay, into the bar. So play it as a turnaround would be something like this okay and you'll want to use the jazzy type chords okay so just take the head of the C sharp 7 you know the 4 3 4 on strings 3 4 and 5 okay and then for F sharp 7 you can put on the whole chord, but just play strings three, four, and six. Okay, this creates this. So you can just put your fingers on it, on uh, three, two, and two, okay? And then the B7, you just play the head, okay, instead of the whole chord. And then you get, okay, back into E, so. And that's the turnaround. So you can do. Okay, 
Yeah, I'm just giving you the sound. Where you put it into the, the full blue cycle is your choice because you can do it every now and then. You don't have to add it to every cycle. Um, now um, in the key of D. Key of D, let's take D, okay? Let's search for the sixth. Okay, we have B7. So in the key of D, let's uh, do the fifth. Let's do the full cycle and you'll see it kind of settles your ear into the scale. So, um... okay. And um, I know some of you can't really hear the scale yet, okay? but let's not waste any more time. Um, this lesson as long as it is. So in D you have B7, E7, A7. And D7. Now, if you play the B7 bar, then you have. Okay? Again, a weak turnaround leading into the seventh. Okay? But still, a turnaround nonetheless. So um, you have uh, D. Then you can do the turn around. Okay? B7, then E7. A7. And then D7. Now, this D7 is kind of a weak resolution, so you can go to this D7. Okay, just like you have C and C sharp 7, you can take it one more fret up into D7. So you can do this. Um, or you can play the whole thing and drop D and that will kind of solve your sound problem, right? Because then you'll have the low D bass and you can do inversions and whatnot. I have a lesson for blues in uh, drop D, if you like, in the blues series, um, where we explore the finger style blues in depth. Okay, so those are C, E, and uh, D, and G. Now if you want the key of A, in the key of A you have F sharp 7, B7, E7, and A7. Okay, let's hear how this plays out. Okay, so um, again, okay, on the bass, you can do 0, 1, 2 into F sharp to F sharp 7 and I'll let you go explore this on your own so before you go practice this subscribe to my channel if you haven't already there's a ton of lessons and everything is for free and I upload regularly so um, subscribe and join the Lick and Rush community everything is for free of course but if you want to give something back anyway there's, there's a link to the Patreon page in the description and I'd appreciate any pledge whatsoever I thank you in advance for your generosity everything goes right back into making your lessons your guitar education so uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next lesson bye for now